Okay, in this video we're going to look at a very simple differential equation, one that you would see on the very first day of a differential equations class, but we're going to solve it five ways. So this is one of my favorite problems to put on a final exam for a differential equations class because it's a pretty easy problem. It builds confidence, but it does give the student an opportunity to learn about all the techniques that they've learned about throughout the entire class. Okay, so let's look at this. Our first method is going to be guess and check. So let's look at this differential equation. Y prime equals Y. Y of zero equals one. Now, what I mean by guess and check is just think through the catalog of functions that you know and think about, well, what functions have the property that when you take their derivative, you get back to themselves? And if you think about it not too long, you know that there's only one function, and that is y equals e to the x. But then you say to yourself, well, I can multiply that by a constant, and I still have a solution to this differential equation. But now I've given an initial condition, so if I plug in x equals 0, I should get 1, but that tells me that a equals 1, which tells me that my solution is y equals e to the x. And now you might think that it's kind of cheesy to guess and check a solution, but a lot of really important mathematics um, on the cutting edge happens by guessing and checking. Okay, so good. We've finished our first method. And so now let's move on to our second method. Okay, so the second method we'll use is viewing this thing as a separable differential equation. So generally when you do that, you use this Leibniz notation. So you write dy dx equals y. Okay, so that tells us that we can write dy over y equals dx, which tells us that the natural log of y equals x plus some constant c. But now we can exponentiate both sides to give us y equals e to the x um, plus c. But now using exponent rules, we know that's e to the c times e to the x, which we can write as a times e to the x, where I just rename that constant e to the c a. But now, again, we'll evaluate this at x equals 0, and we should get 1, which tells us that a equals 1. And finally, we see that y equals e to the x, just like it did before. Okay, so now we've solved this as a separable differential equation. And now we're ready to move on to look at it like an exact differential equation. Okay, so now rewriting this, um, we have y prime minus y equals zero. But now let's recall that exact differential equations are of the form axy um, y prime plus bxy equals zero. And what we need is the partial of a with respect to x should be the same thing as the partial of b with respect to y. But that's not the same in this case, so it's not an exact differential equation. So we do not have that, so not exact. But the good news is, is that we can multiply this by an integrating factor to turn it into an exact differential equation. And that integrating factor will be 1 over y. So let's take this whole thing multiply it by 1 over y and see what we get. So that's going to give us 1 over y, y prime minus 1 equals 0. Good. But now this is exact because we have the partial with respect to x of this guy is 0 and the partial with respect to y of that guy is 0. Okay, good. So the next thing that we need is we need some function psi xy such that the partial with respect to y of psi is 1 over y and the partial of psi with respect to x is um, negative 1. Okay, good. So now notice this tells us that um, psi needs to be the natural log of y plus some function of x. So that's what this equation tells us. But now we can take the derivative of this with respect to x. So that's going to give us um, psi of x equals g prime of x, which equals negative 1. Okay, good. But that tells us that g of x equals negative x plus some constant c. 
Okay, great. But in the end, that tells us that psi is equal to the natural log of y minus x plus a constant which tells us that our implicit solution for this differential equation is of the form the natural log of y um, minus x plus a constant equals zero. Okay, now we can plug in our initial condition, y of zero equals one, and notice this is gonna cancel, and that, that'll give us c equals zero. So that's going to give us the natural log of y equals x, which tells us that y equals e to the x again, exactly as before. Okay, good. Now we've solved it. Okay, good. Now we've solved it as an exact differential equation. And now we're ready to move on to solve it with a series method. Okay, so now let's look at a series solution to this differential equation. So let's set y equal to the sum n equals zero to infinity of a n x to the n. That tells us that y prime equals the sum n equals one to infinity of n times a sub n x to the n minus one. Notice we can re-index that. So that's going to be the sum n equals zero to infinity of um, n plus one times a n plus one x to the n. Okay, good. But now notice we know that y prime minus y equals zero by our differential equation, but that tells us that the sum n equals zero to infinity of n plus one, a n plus one, minus a n, x to the n equals zero. Okay, good, but we can solve this for a n. So notice we know a zero equals one. That's our given by our initial condition. So notice if we plug x equals zero into this, we get a zero and nothing else, so we know a zero equals one. And then also we know that a n plus one equals one over n plus one a n. Okay, fantastic. So that gives us a two, sorry, a one equals um, one over one times one, so that's also one. And then we get a two equals one half, a three equals one third times one half, so that's one over three factorial. A four equals one over four times one over three factorial, so that's one over four factorial. So now it's obvious from this that we get a n equals one over n factorial, which tells us that y equals the sum n equals zero to infinity of one over n factorial x to the n, which equals e to the x. Okay. So now we found a series solution to this differential equation, and we're ready to finish this video off by looking at a Laplace transform solution. Okay, so now we're ready for our final method for solving this differential equation using a Laplace transform. So again, let's write this thing as y prime minus y equals zero, and let's take the Laplace transform of this differential equation. So that's gonna give us the Laplace transform of y prime minus the Laplace transform of y, and let's go ahead and set the Laplace transform of y equal to capital Y. Good, but now notice by the derivative rule for a Laplace transform, that's going to give us S times capital Y minus Y evaluated at zero, and then we have minus capital Y, and then this equals zero. But by our initial condition, we know that this equals one, so we can move that over to the other side of the equation. We get S times Y minus Y equals one, um, so we can factor an S out, that gives us uh, S, so, sorry, we factor a capital Y out, we get S minus one times Y equals one, so that tells us that Y equals one over S minus one. And then finally, we know that our solution is the inverse Laplace transform of one over S minus one. And then looking it up in a chart, we see that that is equal to e to the t. 
And that finishes this video of calculating the solution to this differential equation five ways. We're done.